While we're on the subject of growth, it seems that every few weeks we're telling you about some changes in the looks of Lexington. The last 10 years have brought about more shopping centers, more office space, and more people. All this week, Mike Taylor is going to reflect on the last decade and look ahead to the next 10 years. And tonight, we find out what people believe the future holds for Lexington, a model or a mess. Lexington, population 200,000 and counting. What will that growth create in the next decade? A model or a mess? In the last 10 years, the face of the city has changed. Many older businesses have fallen by the wayside downtown, making room for new development, mostly office space, while the inhabitants and shoppers have moved to the city's fringes. The new Lexington is now beginning to make its move, both in and out of the city. I think we'll have a steady growth, which is important. I think for the downtown, hopefully, will be uh, rejuvenated in the sense that we won't have too many empty buildings. There'll be more retail, more restaurants around the Triangle Park area to serve the convention and, and tourism business down there. There'll be some more office space, I think, along Main Street. And we may see the type of development that'll tie the east end and west ends of Main Street together. I think you're going to see uh, part of the old where we'll maintain uh, the history of Lexington, but I, I think you'll see a little bit of the new also. I think uh, there's got to be continued growth uh, for our downtown, and without that growth, uh, I think we've already seen in the past that it, if we don't have new growth, it's going to slowly but surely die out. The Galleria Shopping Complex, the World Coal Center, Victorian Square and Entertainment Center, and more all hope to complement the existing new hotels, offices, and the Lexington Center. But it will take one key ingredient. And when we get people living in the downtown area, where you will have walking traffic and inexpensive parking, I think that the retail business will revive downtown. I think something is going to be very critical, and I don't think we've paid enough attention to that at this point in time, and that is bringing people into the downtown. I think we need more uh, medium-rise, uh, townhouse, uh, low-rise apartments in and around the downtown. You got to generate some after-hours housing down here. Uh, right now we have a tendency to roll up the streets at 5 o'clock and the businessman goes home to the suburbs. There's a lot planned both down here and in the suburbs. But why? What makes Lexington so attractive to the developers? Tomorrow we'll find out when we talk to some of the movers and the shakers. I'm Mike Taylor, 18 Action News. Thank you, Mike. And when we come back, we'll have a report on computerized food stamps. Well, with all that's completed, being worked on and planned for Lexington's future, there is not much question that it's an attractive place for development. In part two of Mike Taylor's series, Lexington, a model or a mess, some of the people responsible for this development tell us why the city holds their interest. And uh, the uh, first phase of the Galleria will be here. Hopefully we can eventually get the second block and incorporate the World Coal Center as a portion of that. From their offices atop the Vine Center, brothers Dudley and Don Webb have a life-size development model of Lexington, and they're using it extensively. The Webb brothers have had their hands in a number of developments in the last few years, from the corporate plaza on Harrodsburg Road to the downtown Vine Center, home of the Radisson Hotel, as well as other downtown office structures. Their latest ventures include some downtown housing, an ambitious downtown shopping complex in the Galleria, and renovation of the furniture block into Victorian Square, a multi-purpose entertainment center. What about Lexington is attractive to a developer? Well, Lexington's one of those exciting cities of the Sun Belt that's got a high quality of life and it's just an attractive place to live, which in turn lends itself to an, an attractive place to develop. Wallace Wilkinson and Wilkinson Enterprises is building office space both downtown and on the city's edge. They're also involved in the Galleria project but they attracted the most attention with a proposed 41-story World Coal Center on the site of the old Phoenix Hotel. Spokesman Ralph Coldiron agrees with Webb's assessment of Lexington. The quality of life that we have here, uh, and I think that's part of the old, part of the new, uh, that go together in Lexington that makes it uh, acceptable to a wide uh, variety of different people that are looking uh, for new communities, aggressive communities to locate in. The urban county government has been putting a lot of emphasis on development lately. There's even an Office of Economic Development located in the government center on the 12th floor, conveniently near the mayor. 
Director Doug Lots Gibson says companies here. come to People Lexington come for the not-so-obvious so reasons. reasons. You might think a business client would move here because of a labor force, because of the availability of land. Uh, they, don't, they don't come here. They come here because they like horses. They come here because they like to go to Lake Cumberland. They come here because they like the climate. They come here because they like the type of people that live in the community. Uh, strange but important things or, or decisions are made for very unusual reasons. Often growth threatens the preservation of the very reason you're growing. But the key word seems to be controlled growth. Tomorrow, we'll look at Lexington's controls. This is Mike Taylor, 18 Action News. Coming up during the second half of the news hour, better education for... By the year 2000, Lexington is expected to increase its 200,000 population by about a third. That growth has some people smiling and others wishing it would slow down so we can preserve what we have. As we hear now in part three of Mike Taylor's special report, Lexington, a model or a mess, the stabilizing factor in all of this could be planned growth. With the people and the growth come problems or at least changes, and not everyone is pleased. I just don't like uh, the haphazard development. I don't like seeing the farms developed. I like the, the character of this town uh, when all you have to do is drive for five or ten minutes and you're out in the countryside. Well, ideally, sometimes a little different than practically, but ideally, um, I would like to see a slow down growth. What do you think of all the growth? Hmm. I think it's been done too fast and not enough thought for the long-range effects, like on Richmond Road, Nicholasville Road. Even city planners will agree that some of those areas have grown too quickly. Now local officials believe, however, they are on the right track. There is a comprehensive plan in place for the county, and smaller plans are being developed in certain areas. What we're trying to do is to coordinate public, private, and public actions and bring development together in a properly timed and sequenced manner. And that's what growth planning is all about. We're not trying to put a particular limit on growth. We're simply trying to accommodate it and coordinate it in the most cost-effective manner. But there are those who would like to see more than accommodation. Growth is good to a point. And then after you reach a certain point, then the adverse effects of the growth uh, become more predominant. And they adversely affect every person that's in the in the city and so we say at that point you know it's justified to, to slow down the growth and to stop it not one person that i talked to about lexington's development argued the importance of preservation but they all had their own views on how fast we could and should grow i think we need to have a good strong economic base and development is important but also preservation is important preservation of some of the historical things we have around here some of the preservation of the horse farm which is an obvious one preservation of the uh, some of the buildings and things that are old in our standards are important. There are a number of other growing pains that go with development. Tomorrow we'll look at one of the most annoying, traffic. I'm Mike Taylor, 18 Action News. Coming up in the second half of the news hour, another arraignment on another murder conspiracy charge. Growth often brings growing pains, and one pain that we all feel is traffic congestion. With all its planned in and around the city, will Lexington have the road network it needs in 10 years? That's the question Mike Taylor tries to answer in part four of Lexington, a model or a mess? This is New Circle Road, northeast. It's part of the only section of Lexington's circular bypass with traffic signals and direct access roads. To travel from Newtown Pike to Richmond Road, Slightly more than six miles, it takes about 13 and a half minutes. While it takes only 30 seconds longer to travel over 12 miles on the limited access section. City Planning been. Director Dale Toma calls the road a critical planning error the 50s of the 50s. 60s. Limited access on that type of facility is critical if it's going to work and serve to disperse the traffic uh, and get people from their places of residence to their places of employment properly. In the past few years, freeways and large four-lane roads have met with strong opposition in Lexington, especially when houses and existing businesses stood in the way. One of the most controversial examples was the Newtown Pike extension, which would have run through the Irishtown, Davistown neighborhood. I think that they could take a few extra minutes and drive it. I, I just don't think we need no more roads through neighborhoods. 
I think we can adequately handle our trap line. I think, you know, it's sure sometimes it takes a little longer at home than others, but for the cost associated with making just freeways in Lexington, uh, I think the cost is more trying to make the freeway than it is trying to, I and mean, when you start tearing up neighborhoods, that's, that's a higher cost to me than it is taking a little extra time to get home. I think the line has been firmly drawn, and, and, and we've just got to accept that, the engineers and the people involved in planning new roads, and we've got to work around it as best we can. But Garner believes that for the next five years, Lexington's traffic situation will improve, and with good reason. We have either completed or have in the planning phase somewhere around possibly $200 million worth of road work or traffic installation, signal installations in the Lexington area alone. The city is receiving its share, but what about New Circle Northeast and some of the other traffic trouble spots that are already developed? When it's finished, this road, Man of War Boulevard, will run from I-75 to Harrodsburg Road around the south end of Lexington. That will alleviate some of the problems on New Circle. And there are other ideas. One idea may be to uh, widen New Circle Road in that area from four to six lanes, and it'll allow you more space for turning lanes and to ignore the cars that are slowing down out of the mainstream of traffic. If these ideas sound somewhat piecemeal, the city's public works commissioner tends to agree. Garner says that after five years of development at the current rate, when the existing roads have been improved, it's going to be a matter of living with some traffic. Tomorrow, we'll hear final arguments in Lexington, a model or a mess. This is Mike Taylor, 18 Action News. And getting around Lexington is going to be a little easier on Saturdays. For the all this week, we have been looking at Lexington's future, what lies ahead in 10 years. In the fifth and final part of Lexington, a model or a mess, Mike Taylor talks with the people who matter the most, you. Well, it's more like a metropolitan city, and yet we have the small town flavor, and I think Usually that... Usually you can pin them down. They say, well, it's, it's a nice old buildings. It's that wonderful ambience. Uh, that nice scale. You can feel very human in Lexington, and I hope that we... What do you think of all the growth? Well, I think it's great, especially for me. I'm in business. <laughs> and more growth, more business. Some cities are getting old, but Lexington is getting young, and I like that. I think it's great. Why? Well, because this is a wonderful community to live in. Lexington is a fine town. We have wonderful people who live here. Thank you, Jim. Both of them. Ten million two and a half. So ten million two and a half. People seem to be enjoying Lexington Fayette County. They seem to be coming in. We want them to come in. It's important for us because a lot of people who come in bring new ideas and new new things that, that, that benefit all of us. Uh, I would like to see um, as much of the older built environment, those buildings which are architecturally and historic, historically significant, still in existence. I'd love to see the old Lexington return, but I think you have no chance in the world of ever returning to what was 40 years ago. No, I don't think it's growing too fast because I think the faster that it grows, the more opportunities that people have to have jobs and, and so on. Oh, I love Fayette County. I love the bluegrass. I love the horses. It's the best place in the world to live. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Keep on going. I like that. Yeah, nice.